can see, uh, we're starting off this video a little bit different from how we normally start off. This area that you see behind me is Mobile Bay. And during the Civil War, this spot right here is going to be the site of one of the most famous naval battles of the Civil War. Alright, now I know that it's not a whole lot to look at out here, but this was the site of one of the most famous naval battles of the Civil War. So if you look off in the distance there on the horizon right there, that is Fort Gaines, where we just came from. And over there on the horizon line, kind of over that dude's right shoulder, is where Fort Morgan would be located. So this whole area in between would have been seeded with naval mines from the Confederacy blocking off Mobile Bay. that this whole area had Confederate mines or torpedoes what they called them at the time uh, all throughout the bay well back here close to Fort Morgan there was one little channel that was left clear for blockade runners and in August of 1864 this is the area that Apple Farragut is going to try and blast through to open up the uh, the area of Mobile Bay and to the deep south. All right, we're, we're approaching the end of our destination here. We're gonna hop off and then go take a look at Fort Morgan. We just uh, got up here to Fort Morgan. Uh, Fort Morgan, the construction on it started in 1819 and it was uh, completed in 1834. And uh, I know a, a little bit about Fort Morgan and its role in the Civil War, but somebody who knows a lot more than me is this guy right here. This is uh, Josh from the YouTube channel History Savior 1941 and he uh, actually used to work here. Uh, so anyway, we're going to go ahead and, and take a little bit of a look around the, the fort, kind of look at how the Confederates lived, and then kind of explore how this fort played a role in the Battle of Mobile Bay. All right, well obviously what we are looking at here is the tunnel that is going into Fort Morgan. And uh, during the Civil War era, there would have been two big old iron doors here and you can see the uh, the hinges here still uh, but this was what was called a third system fortification and of all of the third system fortifications uh, this is the only one that had a tunnel like this now fort morgan saw service in the civil war spanish-american war world war one world war two and if you let me adjust my lighting a little bit here if you look, you can see the remnants of uh, some rail tracks. Well, that was from the Spanish-American War. They would bring supplies and ammunition in on, uh, on the wharf and then bring it into the fort through this tunnel. All right, we're going to go ahead and go on into the fort now. Hey, uh, also here, coming into Fort Morgan, we, we have a, a frog guarding the gate. And here is the entrance to Fort Morgan. So you can see they have the completion date of 1833 uh, up there on the entrance to the fort. And uh, one quick thing that, that I wanted to note. So if you look here, you can see there's the uh, outer wall. Here's the tunnel that we just walked through. And uh, right here on the fort itself, well, you'll notice that uh, there are places where howitzers would have been positioned. 
Well, this, you might wonder, you know, why would these howitzers be placed where they're firing on their own walls on the inside? Well, if enemy troops were able to get over the wall or come through the tunnel, these are positioned in such a way that they can look down the walls and fire canister or grape shot on anybody who is attacking the fort. When you're in a fortification like this, and this happened during the August siege of the Union troops in 1864, is that you will not only have a naval um, bombardment of this fortification, but you also have a land attack and a land operation. Now, that is what this structure behind me is for. This is basically your first most defense for your riflemen that are inside of the fort. So the infantrymen armed with the muskets, the infield rifles at the time, would have been right here, and that is a breast high wall that would help protect them as um, in front of them, you couldn't see the fortification from the outside, but they would fire on the troops that were attacking, and then you would step down. You had a terraplane that was on the bottom. It was a flat surface. So where they were shooting from was elevated. You would step down and reload your, lock, or your rifle, because these rifles, you got to remember, took a long time to load. They're not like a modern rifle that is magazine fed. You had to load one round at a time. A good soldier during the Civil War could fire three shots in one minute. Now, all of these men were required to do that, but when you're in a heat of battle, you can't really do that. You can't think for the most part. So these guys would step down to try to give themselves a little break, not to get shot, and then they would reload their rifle, step back up onto the breast wall, and fire another round. Now, the troops that were moving around, as you can see, this is not a big spot. So they had to have a way to maneuver around this wall. And then there was a lower plane on the terraplane that they were actually used to make their movements around the wall while the guys have clearance on the top to be able to shoot over the breast wall. All right, so we uh, just got into the, the fort here, and uh, dang, as you can see, like this place is just cool as heck. It almost feels like a, a Roman ruin uh, or something like that. Now, whenever you're looking at these forts, they actually had like a, a dual tunnel system running around the perimeter. So here's one right here, and then if I make my way over here, well, you can see here is the other tunnel system, and then here is the outer wall. So the, your howitzer, or your cannon, would have been positioned right here uh, next to that outer wall. Your gun crews would have been using this tunnel system right here. Well, they have to have powder, they have to have ammunition, and you don't want those guys getting in each other's way. So all of the powder and all of the ammunition would have been run through these tunnels right here and would have been servicing the guys who are operating the howitzers right here. Now, I can't go into this room, but here's an example of what one of these howitzer setups would have looked like. Uh, so you can see it's set up on a wooden plank that, that pivots uh, so that you can cover like a full 45 uh, degree angle to the left or to the right. And that gives us a, a little bit better idea of how these guns would have been operated. Right now we are moving from the casemate uh, into the darkness here. <laughs> this is the powder room. And uh, as you can see, it's uh, pretty sealed off and for good reason. If uh, you had powder in here, well, this is a very sensitive area. Now, originally this would have had a wooden floor and they wouldn't have had nails uh, binding the floor down, it, it would have been wooden pegs. The reason for that is that Civil War soldiers at the time wore shoes called brogans that had a metal heel plate on them. Well, 
if you, for some reason, uh, hit one of those nails with your shoe and it creates a spark, well, that could get explosive. Uh, so soldiers couldn't even wear shoes in here. They would wear like a, a silk sock. And if you look right here, well, these aren't loopholes for shooting. These are vents that are designed to uh, basically keep, keep this area, uh, you know, with airflow and uh, to keep the powder dry. But yeah, this is the powder room. What we are looking at right now is the area of the fort where the ordnance sergeant would work out of. Uh, so the ordnance sergeant was in charge of ammunition and arms and, and everything like that. Uh, so you can see there are some ramrods there. Um, you can see some cannonballs over here. And if we back up and look over in this direction, well, here's a, a closer look at one of those wooden gun carriages that I was talking about earlier. And you can see these wheels down here where they could traverse this whole mechanism and aim the uh, artillery piece wherever they wanted. And then if we, if we back up here, uh, here's an old uh, mortar carriage. And these are all original pieces. Pretty interesting. Now, here's something pretty cool that if you didn't know it was here, you would just walk right by it. But uh, here, some Confederate soldier uh, decided to carve in the date that he was here in 1861. Yeah, kind of cool. There's something here at the fort that I haven't mentioned, but I do feel like I need to briefly touch on. Anytime you see one of these concrete structures, well, that is not original to the fort. So that wouldn't have been here during the Civil War. This is what we refer to as one of the Endicott period forts. Uh, so this would have been built during the late 1800s. Uh, there are other videos where, where you can see me go through some of these Endicott structures, but uh, for this video, we're mainly going to stick to you know, the, the part that deals with the Battle of Mobile Bay during the Civil War. All right, so we've been looking at some of the, the lower parts of the fort here. Now we're going to go up to the bastion uh, along this insanely steep set of stairs. So this is where the, the guns that would be battling, uh, you know, any ships coming through or uh, any soldiers approaching from the east, this, this is where those guns would be located. And holy cow, I've always been told that people in the Civil War were short, but man, these steps are not for short people, much less taller people. But, uh, oh, oh, wow. This is cool. All right, well, these are the gun positions on the western side of Fort Morgan facing Mobile Bay. So you can see up here, you know, they have these spots where the, the gun cradles would be. There's the pivot point, and then you would have this track along here to where you could traverse the guns. And uh, yeah, this, this is the side of the fort where most of the action is going to be taking place during the Battle of Mobile Bay. So we're going to head up to that platform there and uh, get a, a little bit better look at where the battle took place. So right there are the gun positions on the west side of Fort Morgan. And right out here in front of us is where one of the greatest naval battles of the Civil War took place. The Battle of Mobile Bay. Now you, you can see this tower here in front of me. During the Civil War there would have been a lighthouse there. So on August 5th Farragut and his fleet would have made their way right through here. The, the water line would have been closer to the tower then and there would have been just a narrow channel where his, uh, where his ships 
would be avoiding the torpedoes out in the bay. And as they were moving through, there in the distance, it might be a little bit hard to see, but there's a yellow buoy. Uh, that is where the USS Tecumseh hit one of these torpedoes, blew it 20 feet out of the water, and then it rolled over and, and sank. And uh, at that point, there is a fierce bombardment between the Confederates and the Union that takes place right here. Uh, they end up pushing through. Uh, they take on the CSS Tennessee and end up overpowering that. And then they end up in Mobile Bay where they, they rest for a little while before kind of moving back over here to the area of the fort and uh, initiating a siege. But right here, this is, uh, this is where it all went down. Right, so the area that I'm moving into now is a casemate on the western side of Fort Morgan. And uh, so the, the guns here would have been facing Mobile Bay. And on August 5th, as Admiral Farragut and the other Union ships were, were moving into Mobile Bay, well, they were firing on the fort. And in this room, there was a significant amount of damage. So anywhere where you see white, that is the original part of the fort. And in these areas like here and here, well, that is where the wall was taken out. Uh, there, there was an explosion in here, so it's hard to tell on camera, but the, the floor is, is really kind of messed up in here. Uh, but there was an explosion. You can see spots where you know, like shrapnel and everything hit the brick and and busted it up. And here's another spot here where the wall was taken out. So yeah, quite a bit of battle damage right here on the western side of Fort Morgan. So what I'm looking at now is the interior of Fort Morgan. And, and this looks different than what it would have looked like during the Civil War. During the Civil War, you can kind of see a little bit of a discoloration in the grass. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not. But there would have been a giant structure here called the Citadel, which would have housed uh, like up to, to 400 troops. Well, on August 22nd, whenever Farragut started bombarding the fort, uh, well, the Citadel caught fire. If you have a big fire where there is a lot of uh, powder and ammunition, well, that's a bad deal. So if you look right here, this was an old cistern. So the Confederate troops started bringing the powder out, dumping it into the cistern so that it wouldn't explode because of the fire. Citadel ended up burning down and uh, Confederates ended up surrendering the fort. All right, well, there you go. Uh, that was historic Fort Morgan right here at the mouth of Mobile Bay. If, if you ever come to Alabama, whether it's to Gulf Shores or Orange Beach or anything like that, make sure that you take time to come out to Fort Morgan because right here is where one of the greatest naval battles of the Civil War took place. Learned a lot today. Uh, learned a lot from, from Josh uh, that, that I didn't know, you know, stuff about these forts. So, always picking up something new. So be sure to go check out his channel as well. And uh, as for now, off to the next place. at this lazy bird hitching a ride across Mobile Bay instead of flying like everybody else. <laughs>